So good morning, St. Gabriel. So it's very good to see all of you this morning and welcome if you're going to be watching online later as well. Uh, this morning's service is a service of Holy Communion and so we gather as the people of God to offer our prayers, our praise, our thanksgiving and to hear and receive from God. Now I was wondering, in these times when gathering physically is quite difficult, what does it mean to gather as the people of God? Well, from earliest Christian times, the believers in Jesus met on the first day of the week. And the first day of the week, if you remember, was Resurrection Day. And they met in order to say that the whole of the week ahead was God's and belongs to God. And maybe that's helpful to us as we gather, both physically here and also online. So we're thinking this morning about the theme, Jesus among us and with us. And Vanessa will be down to preach to us later. So um, just a word or two about our service during these times. Um, Martin will have given you as you came in a service booklet. This is your service booklet for St. Gabriel's worship. So could you take it home? Could you look after it? Could you make it your own? You can use it if you wash online. And it's um, something we've been asked to do, to bring the booklet to and from church with us so that we don't share booklets within church. Also, um, although it says no exit there, we will leave church going out that way. And again, thank you to Martin and to Lawrence who worked out our one-way system. But you can go out through that door to the toilets if you need to. So let's take a moment of quiet and bring to God all that is on our hearts on this time, all that we are thinking about as we ask God to be with us. And so we begin our service on page three. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. God is spirit, let us worship him in spirit and truth. The Lord is with us, let us praise his name together. And I said earlier that our theme today is Jesus both amongst us and with us. So the hymn that Rachel is going to play um, is a hymn that turns our thoughts towards the fact of God's authority, that the Lord is King. And that can be an encouragement to us at a time when we don't always have the trust that we want to have in human authorities. Now, if you know the words by heart, you might want to say them internally as Rachel plays, or maybe just you can hum gently under your mask. Thank you, Rachel. in saying the prayer on page three that begins, Almighty God. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, 
and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanses the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we look back at the week that's just passed, and this, in this time of confession, we say sorry to God. We confess to you our lack of care for the world you have given us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our selfishness in not sharing the earth's goodness fairly. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our failure to provide resources for others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect or special prayer for this week. And we are in, in this season of the churches here, the season of creation tide, when we remember the earth and all that God has made. And our collect this morning echoes this prayer. Lord of creation, whose glory is around and within us, Open our eyes to your wonders, that we may serve you with reverence, and know your peace at our lives end, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So Rachel is going to play again, and our first hymn began with God, and God's authority in the world. And this song that she's now going to play expresses something of our response to God and you might like to make it a prayer as Rachel plays and it's the, the song I will offer up my life in spirit and in truth. Thank you Rachel. <laughs> I will offer up my life in spirit and truth and we say those words when we sing them because we are echoing the fact that Jesus came and poured his life out on the cross for us and that theme is very much there in our reading 
which Joyce is going to come and bring to us. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. It's very good to see some of us. Hope we'll see more next week. The reading is taken from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 13, imitating Christ's humility. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete, be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Who though he was in the form of God, did not regard the equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess to Jesus Christ in law, his Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, do only in my presence, but much more now in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we now immediately afterwards have our gospel reading, so please stand if you can. Our gospel reading is taken from Matthew chapter 21, reading from verse 23 to 32. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, 
we do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. The parable of the two sons. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your mind and believed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Please be seated. Thank you. Well, it looks like you've got a few words from me this morning. So I want you to cast your minds back to that Philippians reading. But to cast your minds back to the Philippians reading with the question echoing from our Gospel reading in Matthew. And in the Gospel reading in Matthew, the question that they were asking was, where does authority come from? Remember, Jesus had quite a tough time in his earthly ministry, in his time on earth, because people questioned who he was. And often they did not believe in his authority. So the question of authority is really important, isn't it? If you go into a shop these days, um, one of the questions people may um, ask one another is, why aren't you wearing your mask? But actually, I have a great deal of sympathy for shop assistants who might feel that they have to ask that question, but feel that they cannot because they don't feel confident in their own authority to do so. So it's a tricky question, isn't it? The question of authority. And Jesus' authority was under question the whole time, but where does Jesus' authority come from? Chapter 2 of Philippians tells us really clearly. It begins by asking, where do we find encouragement? This is in verse 1. Where do we find consolation? Where do we find compassion and sympathy? And we find it in the example of Jesus, who gave up his life and showed us a pattern. And so the encouragement there at the beginning of chapter 2, when the Apostle Paul is writing to Jesus' followers, is to encourage them to make Paul's joy complete. He says, by having the same mind, by having the same love, and by being in full accord with the way Jesus lived his life. And I see some of you have got phones, so you might want to turn if you've got a phone out to chapter 2 of Philippians, because it's an encouraging pattern for us. It's an encouraging pattern for us even in these times when life is challenging and life is full of new things. Where does our encouragement, where does our comfort, where does our consolation come from? 
as Christian believers? Well, it comes from following the example of Jesus. And the pattern of Jesus' life was to pour out his life for others on the cross. And so St Paul says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but the interests of others. It's really hard, isn't it, all the time to be looking out for the interests of others. And by hard, I mean challenging. Because often, when we are anxious or afraid, it's natural to want to look to our own interests. It's really understandable that we do that. But the encouragement here in chapter 2 of Philippians is to look to the interests of others. Who might that be for us at this time? It might be that we look out for one another in our street, in our neighbourhood that we might notice whether our neighbours are okay, whether they're coming and going okay, whether they need anything. It might be that we look out for the interests of people amongst ourselves, for the friends and contacts, those people with whom we're regularly on the phone, we can send messages to, and just check if they're okay. It might be we look out for the interests of those we're actually living and those of us in families and in households will need to be mindful of the interests of others. And as a church, we want to continue to look out for the interests of one another here in the Fellowship of St Gables. And that's really, really challenging, isn't it, when we can't all gather physically together. But as we do this, what is our pattern? Who is our pattern? And who is our example? Well, our pattern is Jesus Christ. And it says in the middle of that section that Joyce read to us so beautifully earlier, that Jesus was in the form of God. He was like God. He was fully God. But he didn't regard his status his, his, his equality with God as something to hold on to and not let go of. He came to be amongst us. He came to be at our level. He experienced human things like pain, tiredness, hunger, cold. He was a child subject to the discipline of his parents. And so in every respect, although he was fully God, he also submitted to all that comes with our humanity. And it was out of that humanity and that compassion for others that he met in his earthly ministry, where he offered healing, he offered hope, that he also went to that obedient death, as it says. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And so God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And if you want to be encouraged after this service, you might want to reread chapter two and also read the beginning chapter of Colossians where it talks about that authority of Jesus who is seated at the highest place in the heavens with God interceding for us. And even the last book of the Bible, Revelation, talks about the authority of Jesus. And that's something to hold on to as encouragement in these times of uncertainty. And so where then is our place in this? Well our place in this is highlighted just at the end of that passage that Joyce read. And in my Bible it's got the little subheading 
shining as lights in the world. And verse 12 says, therefore, my beloved, we are God's beloved family. We are God's beloved sons and daughters. He cares intimately for each one of us. And it says, therefore, my beloved, just as you've always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you. It is at God who is at work in each one of us, sitting here in this place, gathering to worship, gathering to give God glory. It is God who is at work in each one of us, watching online. And so we give thanks for that. And that's where we turn to at the start of each week for our guidance, for our wisdom, for our knowledge of how to live. So let's hold on to these things in these troubling times. Amen. And so as we continue in our worship, we're going to say together the statement of faith, the creed, which talks about the God in whom we believe. So if you're able to, please stand and we're on page five. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you please be seated and Hannah is going to come and lead us in our prayers. Let us pray. Lord, I pray for the nations of the world that they may know you and serve you in the cause of peace and justice. Father, as we look on the news and see what is happening around the world today, Lord, we just ask that you will draw close to world leaders. We ask that you will give them wisdom and understanding, and we pray that they will seek guidance from you in everything that they do, so that your world will be a better place for us to live in and to worship you. Lord, thank you for your gift to all humanity, for sending your dear son to come and live among us. In the good times and bad, when life is smooth or in crisis, we can invite you to hold us close and protect us. May we grow in resilience and learn from past adversity. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory. Father, we pray for those who are ill. We trust to you, tender care, all those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens,
Your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe, comfort and heal them. Restore them to health and strength through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father, we pray for those who are grieving. We lift our hearts to the family of the police that was killed yesterday and all others who have passed on. Lord, we pray for peace in our world and we pray for compassion towards one another. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers for the, the sake, sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Hannah, for your prayers. And so we say now, we are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. And we're not able to share the peace by a hug unless we're sitting with our immediate family members, and then that's fine, or a handshake but we can share the sign of peace with one another by just a gesture. So the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. just say a word or two about how we're going to do communion. Um, we take communion in one kind only, so come up for the bread. Um, if you would prefer not to take communion, just keep the hands like this. Um, I put on a visor for this part, and also um, I just want to say that um, we acknowledge the fact that this is a loss. Uh, not being able to share bread and wine together, but Jesus is still amongst us. And the words that we say in the service express that. So I'm going to put my eyes up on now.
We remember all that Jesus has given us. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. We turn to page seven. And please join in the words that follow. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right in thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took bread, he took flesh as your son. Born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you, and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the heart. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Rather, by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of his resurrection as we offer you our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Saint Gabriel and all the saints May praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen.
And let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. At the bottom of page 12. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. And so I'm going to ask uh, Lawrence just to guide people to come up uh, one by one. And as you come up, if you could go back down that side and we'll, we'll come from the front Lawrence going to the back. So do you want to hear with faith? Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ forgiven for you and his blood which was shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith.
we join together in the prayer of thanksgiving on page 14. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and dwell to your praise and glory. Amen. I'm going to ask Lawrence to come up briefly and I'm just going to move the microphone for you, Lawrence. Um, while uh, Lawrence gets ready to just uh, welcome everybody as church would, I just want to say something about uh, next week. Next week we are thinking about harvest and the harvest theme. Lawrence will be leading. Um, what I'd like to do this week is to phone some of you and we're just trying to think about what does harvest mean in a city, in an urban environment. So I might just get some little quotes from you about how you think of har harvest in the middle of the city because we're not out in the countryside where you can see the great big combine harvesters bringing in the grain but maybe some of you are collecting marrows and squash and apples and things from your garden. So don't be surprised if, if I or maybe one of, other, of our leaders just phone you for some little quotes because we're going to try and think about what harvest means to us in the city. And also what we want to do at these times when uh, food banks and Christian Kitchen are really stretched and we can't give goods and produce in kind is we can give supermarket tokens that will help those who are feeding um, those who are really struggling and having hard times. So be thinking about whether you could give a gift in that way through a supermarket token or possibly just transferring some money to the parish account and telling Martin that that's what it's for. Anyway, Lawrence, I'm going to let you come and just have a word with us. Hi, good morning everyone. It is really great to be able to see you, to see all of you here today. Um, you know, we have been, we've been through some challenging times, we really have been. And just to see so many of you turning up this morning, it has really been heartwarming. Um, so yeah, do go out there and do spread the news. Just tell everyone that church, yes, is open again. Um, and that they can come along and worship uh, in a very safe and a COVID-19 friendly environment. Um, because I think that's what people want to know, that when they do come into the church, um, everything is safe for them. So yeah, thank you all very much. And thank you for everyone who, who spent so much time, you know, Martin is sitting out back, um, but Martin has been very instrumental in making sure that the layout of the building, making sure it's signposted and every, everything is signposted. Yeah, he's been very instrumental in doing that um, so that we can gather in a, in a nice, warm, welcoming environment and a COVID-19 safe environment. So thank you. And thanks again to Jill. Jill is as wonderful as usual having you here and leading and preaching for us and to Rachel playing, on the, playing the music. We cannot sing, uh, and you know, we all love to sing, um, but you know what, there will be come a time when we are able to sing again, and we will be able to sing to our heart's content again. Um, so yeah, but you know, um, let's continue to, to worship the way we can do at this time. As she says, next Sunday is Harvest Festival. Um, I will be leading, I think it will be Adam who will be here. Um, yeah, to, to preach. Um, Adam is our new curate. I don't know if you've Dave, met. Thank sorry, you. Dave. Sorry, Dave is our new curate. I don't know if you've met Dave as yet, but do please come along and give him a warm welcome, even if it's from a social distancing welcome. Yeah, it would be good to, uh, to see him. As just said, Harvest Festival. The Harvest Festival for me is about a good thing, something back to God. Um, you know, we have been blessed with a lot from God. Normally it is the, the produce of the land which we offer up. Um, and 
yes, we won't be able to do that this year, but I still said there are ways that we can probably still show our thanks and our gratitude for everything that God has given us, all the blessings which have been bestowed on us. And we all know that there have been lots of blessings which have been bestowed. And just finally for myself is to say, um, we have been through we, we have been through the pandemic, we are still going through the pandemic. There are lots of people out there who are sick, lots of people who are lonely, lots of people who've lost loved ones and haven't been able to 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 celebrate their life because that's what we normally do when someone passes. It's normally a celebration of life. And we haven't been able to do that. But though we need to keep everyone in our prayer. So everyone who has lost their loved ones, everyone who has been through the pandemic who suffered, please do keep them in our prayer. And let's hope that we will get through this together. And if we work together, we will get through it. And then we will be able to celebrate everything that was as we normally do. All right. So that's it for me. Yeah, keep everyone in your prayer. Have a blessed day. And I really, truly look forward to seeing all of you and more next week. All right. Have a good day. So in a moment we're going to have our closing responses, but um, Rachel is going to play for us a couple of verses of Be Thou My Vision, and then I will say the blessing. Thank you, Rachel. So the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, in the name of Christ. Amen. And as we, we leave church today, we, we cannot stay in church and socialise, but we can speak to one another. Um, I think Martin has opened the um, left hand door, which is the way out. And uh, last time we were here, we were able to gather just outside in the car park, under the tree. So enjoy the fact that you can see other people's faces even standing at a social distance. And it's not raining. <laughs> Could we have a final verse, Rachel, just as people get up and go the same in the third house? See that.